So this question is asking us to find the horizontal and vertical reactions at the pin at B. Note that the support at D is fixed. And the sign convention for the positive x and y direction applies for the answers and the diagram is not to scale. So this is going to need to be analysed as a framing machine question. So how you can identify that is we have forces which are not applied at nodes. Okay, So for it to be a truss analysis question, all the forces need to be applied at nodes. Okay. So we have multi-force members as a result of these not being at nodes, so we need to apply, uh, sorry, analyze it as a frame or machine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to draw the free body diagram of the overall structure. So putting like this, remembering that there's a whole bunch of pins. So the external forces is this three kilonewtons and the four kilonewtons. And the other thing we have is at the base, um, it's a fixed support, so it's gonna have a horizontal, vertical, and moment reaction. So we'll call it dy, dx, and md for those. Now, we're not actually interested in what these are, so we don't really have to solve for them if we don't want to. Um, what we are interested in is the forces up here at the pin at B. So in order to expose those forces, we're going to need to break apart our frame into the components that it's made from. So it's got three different components, this vertical one here, this horizontal one here, and this um, diagonal one here. Now, there is one thing special about this diagonal one here, and that's that it's a two-force member. So remember that a two-force member is one that's basically pinned at both ends and it's got no other forces or moments applied um, through the middle. Okay, so what makes it special is that when it's straight, as in this one here, the direction of the force has to be in the direction of the member. Now please go back and look at the recap video on this topic if you want a bit more clarification on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the free body diagram of just this top member here. So I'll call it um, horizontal member. And by doing that, I should be able to expose the force in um, pin B, which is the forces that we're looking for to answer the question. And I'm also going to expose the force that's um, acting through this um, member as well, the two force member. So when we go ahead and separate it out, just the horizontal member, We've got this four kilonewtons to carry down. All right, now we've exposed what's happening here. So we know at the pin here, it's going to have a horizontal and a vertical force, but we already know the direction of it is in the two force member direction. So it's going to be like this. So FAC, I'll call it. So we need to give it a direction. I'm going to assume it's going up to the right, uh, like so. And we should be able to find the angle that it's acting at. So that's the angle in here, which I'll call theta. Um, we can get it from the diagram itself. So if we draw in this triangle here, you can see this side has a length of 4 meters, and this side here has a length of 2 meters. It's a right angle, and I'm looking for this um, angle theta. So if you do 10 inverse of the opposite over the adjacent, you find out um, that this angle is about 26.6 degrees. So that's going to be the same angle that this force is applied at since it was the two force member. All right, so the other thing that we have done when we've separated out just this top um, member is we've exposed the force on the end here at point B. And again, it's a pin, so it's going to have a horizontal and a vertical force. But this time we don't know that the direction of it is the direction of the member because this one on the end here is a multi-force member, right? It's pinned on one end, it's fixed on the other, and it's got extra forces acting through the middle. So definitely, definitely not two force. So that means we need to give it a generic X and Y component. So I'll call it BX and BY for those components. And that's what we need to solve for. So we have our three equilibrium equations um, that we can use to get uh, these forces. And I'm going to say that starting by summing moments here at point B is a good 
um, way to approach the question because both bx and by act through the point, so they're not going to contribute a moment. The only unknown will be fac. And once we've got that, we can go back and apply our other two equilibrium equations and avoid uh, simultaneous equations. So summing moments about point B to be equal to zero. So we said these two are out. So the next one is the four kilonewton force. And we need the distance in here to its line of action. I didn't copy it across, but we can see here it's two meters. And the direction, this is going to try and push us clockwise so it's negative. So now if we consider the force FAC, I'm going to go for splitting it up into horizontal and vertical components. So if we start with looking at what the vertical component in here is, it's going to be um, the sine side of this angle. And we need to multiply by the distance from its line of action back to point B. So it's acting through um, point C here. All the way back to point B is going to be this 4 meters. And this is trying to push us anti-clockwise, so it's positive. Now, if we consider the horizontal part of the force here, we can see that its line of action is going to end up backing up through point B, our point of interest. Therefore, it's not going to create a moment and it's not going to enter the equation. So the only unknown in that equation is FAC. And if you go ahead and solve for it, it comes out to about 4.47 kilonewtons. It comes out positive, which means that the direction I drew is correct. All right, so now we need to go through and find BX and BY. So let's use our next equilibrium equation, which is sum of forces in the X direction. So um, BX I've drawn positive, so it's going to be positive in the equation. And a part of this is in the X direction. It's going to be the cos side of the triangle. Um, nothing else is in the x direction. So bx is actually going to come out to be a negative value, and it's going to be 4 kilonewtons. So it's come out negative, which means the direction is incorrect. So it's actually 4 kilonewtons this way, okay, the opposite direction to what I had. All right. So now we need by, some forces in the y direction to get it. So I've drawn by up, so it's positive. We've got 4 going down, so it's negative. We have part of this going up, so it's positive. It's going to be the sine side of the triangle. So if you go ahead and solve for by, and this one comes out to 2 kilonewtons. Right, and it's come out positive, that means the direction was correct. So it is indeed um, upwards, um, as I drew here. So now we're at the point where we can actually answer the question. Um, we don't need to go through and solve for the other things like the reactions, because we just won't ask for them. So remembering that we said the sign convention for the x and y direction applies, so we found that our reaction was back to the left for the x direction, so that means it should be negative 4. And we found that this was up, so it should be positive, positive 2. So if we go through and look, we can see that the first one matches at description, so that's the answer for the question.